The title of this message is called Loving the Least of These. Loving the Least of These. In Matthew 25 and 40, Jesus said that in his word, if you want to turn there, so that way we're all, and I'm reading from the New King James Version, um, 2540 it says and the king will answer and say to them assuredly I say to you if you'll stand for the reading of the word sorry assuredly I say to you inasmuch you did it to one of the least of these my brethren you did it unto me inasmuch as you have done it to the least of these you've done it unto me Praise God. And then the next scripture I want to come to you from, I had to write all this out because my stuff wouldn't print. I was writing like I was a printer. <laughs> John chapter 21, 14. John chapter 21. And we're going to turn to verse uh, 14 through 17. And then um, we're going to get on in here, get on through here. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. You know, the world can't receive the truth because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. I will come to you a little longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You will live also. You may have a seat. God told any, everybody that's in here tonight as I was praying for this word, God wanted me to let you know that he's here to see about you. God is wanting to tend to you. He wants to see about you. He desires not only to feed you his word, but he also desires to see that word produce in your life. And if you're here tonight, sometimes we go through things and we, and, and, and we have to learn to allow the Holy Spirit to attend to us. Uh, we get saved and we try to go through things by ourselves, but God says, I'm, I'm coming to see about that pain. I, I, I'm coming to see about that addiction that don't nobody know you got, you know, you're still struggling with lust and all that. He said, yeah, I, I, I love you. I'm coming to see about that. You want to throw in the towel, you want to quit, you want to give up, I'm, I'm coming to check on that. You got a whole lot on your plate, you're carrying a whole lot, and you're smiling. I'm coming for that. I'm coming to see about that. God is coming to ascend it. Jesus said, whatever you've done to the least of these, you've done unto me. And when I look at the word tend, the definition of the word tend means, in the sense it means to move or be inclined to, to move in the direction of. The French definition of that means when you are tending to somebody is stretch. Whew. Y'all know when, it, when you really have to tend to people, it, it's a stretch sometimes because you got to forget about yourself. You got to care for it. Tend also means to look after, to give attention to, to keep an eye on, to protect, to watch, to guard, to nurture, to cherish. You become an attendant to that person, a servant, if you will. And, 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 and all that sounds like the Holy Spirit. And I promise you, I can't do all that for nobody without God. So I want to make you, I want you to understand that he's not expecting you to go try to attend to all the people of the world. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit. Because he's an ever-present help in the time of trouble. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. When everybody else walk out, he's still there. When you've ignored him for months and months and months and the people you've been lending your ear to have gotten you in trouble, guess who's still there? The spirit of truth. The spirit of righteousness. The spirit of God. God wants us to allow him to tend to our soul. God wants to attend to our mind. He wants to tend to our will and our emotions. We got some stuff hidden in these areas. We got some stuff in our minds that hinders the flow of God's love. 
We got some stuff in our minds that hinders the flow of God's anointing. We have some, we, we, our will is too strong. Our will is too strong. Paul said, when I would do good, evil is always present. The good that I want to do, I can't do. And then when I try to do that good, evil is standing up right there wait, waiting on me. He said, when I would do good, evil is always present. So God said, I'm coming to see about you because I know you want to do right. But because we live in this body that craves the world, I'm going to have to teach you how to allow the Holy Spirit to see about you. He wants to heal you from the, he wants to heal those things that we got hidden in our soul from even when we were children. Some of the stuff that we do, it, it, it goes way back and, and it's affecting our adulthood. And so we can't, it's, it blocks the flow of God's love. And if you're wondering, you, you, you wonder, you're like, why don't I, why don't I, I can't do people. If I hear another Christian say that, <laughs> like for real, we're going to have to get it together. We all guilty, but we're going to have to get it together. I just can't do people. Oh, my God, I cannot do women. What? <laughs> y'all better. Come on, y'all, but, that's, but, but the Holy Spirit said, I'm coming to see about that. Why is that? She cheated on your husband. They didn't. Why is that? You know, why is that? Why is it that you can't do people? We got to work on, yeah, Holy Spirit said he's coming to see about that. Things that have us weighed down. And we don't know why one minute we're excited about God and the next minute we're not. One minute we're in and then we're out. It's something in our souls that, that's, that's, Weighing us down. Jesus said, I I'm coming to see about that. Yeah, yeah. He coming to see about that. He coming to see about why can't nobody even get too close to you and you act a hot fool. What's wrong with you? I'm coming to see about that. Because there's something that is wrong with us. And God says, I'm coming to see about those things that's blocking my love. Because for some reason, we've been saved for a long time, and we don't care about nobody else's pain. And so God says, I'm coming to see about that. I want to know. No, 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 no. This is not one of those messages that you're going to get hammered, and then you're going to get released. No, I'm trying to help you to understand something. That God is concerned about the condition that you're in. And he told, and the Bible says, you don't know what condition you're in. Do you know your true condition? If Jesus was to come down here, if God himself were to come and snatch your flesh off your body and the only thing we could see was your spirit, what do you really look like? If he came and snatched that blanket off of you, what do we really look like? But it's okay because I'm sure if he snatched the blanket off me, it's all, oh, Lord. But it's okay because you know what? He's coming to see about that. Yeah, he's coming to check on that. He wants to see about that. What is your reality? What is your truth? What is your reality, man of God? What are you really struggling with? Don't tell me. But whatever it is that you've said, eh, it's all right. Don't nobody know nothing about it. God says, I'm coming for that. Because it's a young man that's struggling with that, and you can't do nothing with him. Because you're still struggling with it. And so the things that we don't deal with, we allow. Is that the truth? If you don't deal with something, you know, what, what I'm trying to say, Pastor, he, 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 he hit the ham on the nail when he said, you know, well, we don't deal with what our kids got to deal with. Well, that's not just our kids, it's the people that's under our leadership. Because sometimes when, when you don't deal with something, you allow it. You can't speak against it because you're guilty of it. So you allow things to go on that you know ain't God, and you don't say nothing, and God says, I'm coming for that. I'm coming for that. Now, I don't know what your truth is, but your truth got to line up with the truth of the Spirit of God. And so our truth, I'm going to say our truth needs to line up with God's truth, but God said, I'm not scared of your truth. God already know what your truth is. The Bible says that God desires truth from the inward parts. So if you want to speak his language, the only language he speaks is truth. Not Spanish, not French, 
Not crying, not manipulation, not depression. That the only truth, the only language that God speaks is truth. That's, that's it. There's no other language. Please understand this, that when we come before God in truth, freedom. It don't matter. I was in prayer, and he said, just, just, just keep it real simple, because I'm going to tell you something. When you get before God, this is a good time for you to tell him about your truth. Now, understand that he already knows what our truth is. You know, I had to go in, in God's presence and admit, I said, God, my mind just be a mess. You know, it's, it's sometimes you just got to say that. Lord, my mind is a mess. My perception be all off and darkened through, looking through dark lens and just chaos and war going on. And God is blessing me. I'm blessed, but I'm so, your mind sometimes can go down chasing a rabbit through the forest and you done lost all off track of God. I took my mind to the altar. Better ask somebody. I ain't got time to be wandering no rabbit in the forest. I ain't got time to chase no rabbits in no forest. My mind going to line up with the word of God. You going to quit seeing stuff wrong. You going to get your soul clean, Teresa. You going to get your emotions right. You going to get your will submitted. And you going to see things through God's eyes and get yourself healed so you can quit seeing stuff all messed up. Ain't nobody after you. <laughs> Ain't nobody trying to stop you from being the next Juanita Bonham or T.D. Jakes. Who, I mean, come on, somebody. It's a whole lot of people in the world. It's a whole lot of people in this world. You ain't got to fight over people. And if you really want, if you really want to do ministry, just try tending to one person for real. What did you say, Brother Dominique? <laughs> Just try to see about one person for real. And then you'll, be, you'll, you'll quit trying to think everybody's against you. Yeah. But that right there, that Jesus said, I'm after that. Yeah, he's after that. Ain't nobody mad at you. Ain't nobody jealous of us. Ain't nobody trying to compete. Ain't nobody trying to look like you and talk like you and take your, your fire off your back and your anointing off your skin. Ain't nobody trying to do none of that. Come on, that's all up in here. And God said, see, you can't even love nobody because you're suspicious of everybody. Yeah, you jumping and shouting and you all in war, but your war is with, with yourself. But God says, I'm coming to see about that. I want him to. God, help me, Lord. <laughs> Y'all, it came to me before it came through me. So I already got my whooping. Your turn. So Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to tend to our souls. But the Holy Spirit is there every day. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what I, 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 I've been praying about. I said, Lord, we have not utilized what you left us. We, we don't. And the Holy Spirit is such a gentleman, he'll just wait. I got the answer right here, but if you want to run down the block and around the corner and all that, I'll be here when you get back. And when you come dragging in on your belly and knees, all scarred up and worn out, you ready to hear the truth now? You ready to hear God's will? That's what it's about. God will also send people. Ugh. Now, this one was hard for me, and I had to come. You know, I had to be real, and God had to show this to me. I had to get around some people that I know love me. But the enemy sometimes will try to make you think that the people that God sent to love you don't love you, but they do. See, we got to get outside of that isolated salvation. That's the devil. You better. That's the devil. Oh, don't come at me with that. Because I know what happens to the mind with isolation. Don't even go down that road. There's separation and then there's isolation. Which one are you? Because separation is, is a purpose to separation. It's a kingdom. So, something about being separated unto God. But then when you isolate it, mm, the enemy is going to use you to kill you. I know what I'm talking about. 
I know what I'm talking about. He will destroy your purpose, your destiny, and all that stuff by your own hand. By your own hand. And he'll have you coming against the people that God sent your way. You've been telling me that. And, I, and, and I'm like, okay. And, you know, God had to use my husband. He's like, Teresa. Now, you know God called you to sit up under, under the man of God. But the enemy will have you bumping everything, and you don't even know where it started. Y'all laughing because y'all know I ain't the only one. Mad at folks, they don't even know you mad. Done, some folks done left the church, and don't nobody even know they really even gone yet. Just think you out Sunday. You gone. You done left the building. It's very sad because your mind wasn't submitted to what the Holy Spirit is here to do. And the Holy Spirit is here to keep us right in alignment with God's will. And so, so what happens is we try to be saved without the Holy Ghost. And that's why we keep going through all this stuff. And I don't care how long you've been coming to church. How long you've been in the Spirit? It don't matter how long you've been in the church. How long you've been walking in the Spirit? That's what I want to know. How often are you in and out of the spirit? Because can't nobody be in the spirit all the time. But my goodness, get in there sometime. Come out with a little residue of God on you. When are you going to speak to that lust demon, man? Don't let that devil drag you around like you a sack of potatoes and you think you in control. You getting played. <laughs> And you're going to get exposed because God is coming for that. He's coming for that. And I'm not talking about judgment. Don't get it twisted. I'm talking about tending. See, he, this is not that kind of message. See, God wants to attend to the things in you that's blocking the flow of his love to others. What on the inside of you is keeping you from loving your children the way you know you need to be loving them? Why do you not love your daughter? What is the problem? Why is it that you don't love your mom? What's going on? So we got to, we got to say, Lord, woo, Lord, flash that light on my soul. I don't want to look at it, but I know I need to look at it. I got to look at it. I got to look at it because that thing is keeping me from loving people for real. We ain't talking about that patty cake church hugging love. You know how that, you know. No, I'm talking about looking at me, smiling first, and, and really just hugging me and discerning me. I mean, just, you know what I'm talking about, Sister Antoinette? You know that kind of hug that is just, she got it right here, this one right here always. You can forget it. If she hug you, it's a wrap. But it's a discerning kind of love. It's that kind of love, and, and, and trust me, the Holy Spirit will keep it per appropriate, but it's that kind of love that discerns you. I'm not just hugging you just because I'm walking past you. I'm hugging you to discern you. I don't want nobody. I tell my 12, where my 12 at? Holler back. I, told, <laughs> I tell my 12, I said, uh, y'all don't get to die around me. They already know. If you even look weak, I'm coming. <laughs> they know. What's going on with you? <laughs> what's going on with you, right, Tom, Tom? Look, what's going on with you? You can't die around me. God wrapped himself in flesh. He got up from the throne. Now, he could have stayed comfortable. But he got up. Y'all think he just got up from the grave? No, he first got up from the throne. <laughs> that was the first time he got up for us. Was he got up from the throne. Then he wrapped himself in flesh. Got in the womb of Mary. And walked among us. So that he could be touched with our feelings and our infirmities. Now, you, I want you to understand, if God had to get up from his throne, from his comfortable place to come see about you, then you're going to have to get up from your comfortable position, your high, your whatever it is you, you just wrapped in comfort in, and you're going to have to go see about somebody else. And let's start with your children. 
your wife, your husband. Let's start with your grandchildren. Go see about your nieces. Go just, just, show, just show up, pop up on somebody. I'm talking to me too. Pop up on them. What you doing? Go to their high school. Take them to lunch. You know, because sometimes when we think of the word 10, we say, oh, that's too much work. I got too much going on. I ain't got time to be picking nobody up, doing this, doing that, visiting, calling. Well, <laughs> well, you know what? God is after that. Why? Why can't we see about someone else? Because we're not letting God see about us. That's really what it is. You're not letting him get all that mess out of you, so that's why you can't go see about nobody else. Because you're too busy consumed. We are too busy being consumed with our stuff. That we can't go see about nobody else because it's too time consuming. I, I, I got to be in bed by 6. I start the laundry by 9. The pot roast by 4. I got to pick the kids up at 2. And everybody around me is going to hell, but I got stuff to do. And so God is saying... I, I, my prayer pastor has been, Lord, put a tending in my spirit. Give me a burden for people. And I know that's a scary kind of prayer. But I said, Lord, give me a tending. Give me a burden. Because, see, one of the things that he told Peter, he said, Peter, do you love me? Do you? Feed my lambs. And then he asked him again. He said, Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. And then he asked him a third time, and Peter almost got twisted on the Lord again. He was getting upset. He said, come on, God, you know I love you. What do you mean asking this for me a third time? Do I love you? For one, he was breaking the curse of denial that he did when he denied him three times. He had to break that curse. So that's why he asked him that three times, because he was breaking that curse. You're talking about the vow. That's what he was doing. Yes, Lord. He was breaking that vow, and Peter getting mad. Well, how do you think Jesus felt when he heard the cock crow? Yes, Lord. And he had to watch his son, his Peter, take off through the woods, cussing, saying, I don't know, man. But he broke the curse that Peter denied him three times. But then the other thing he had to let Peter see. I'm about the people. When I was here, I was about y'all. But now that I'm leaving, I need y'all to be about these. You want to really get into the next level of discipleship? There is another level. There's another level of discipleship than gathering. I'm getting right down through there, too. We, we, we get saved and we learn how to gather. See, right now we're gathering. We all gather together. We got that down. We'll gather over here, gather over there. You see Hillsong? They gather real good, too. And everybody gathers. You standing next to these people. Are you going to look at a Hillsong worship? And I love Hillsong. Oh, I love watching it. And the worship there, and they be just worshiping me. I said, but I wonder how many of them people know that person right there. How many of those people are willing to, and I know there's a lot of them. Because I know there's a lot of people, even in here, that really do already tend to people. I know there's people in here that already tend. But some of us need some help <laughs> getting outside of ourselves. So we've already gathered, and we're supposed to gather. The Bible says, don't forsake the gathering together of the saints, as some do. So we're supposed to gather. Don't stop gathering. But when you gather, make sure that while you're gathering, you're being fed. Amen. See, there's a lot of gathering going on, but are people really being fed? So we got to make sure that we're, that we're being fed. What are we being fed? The, we're being fed the word of God. And so the word of God, we're supposed to ingest the word of God. Now, when you are on milk, you are here or only. I know. <laughs> when you're on milk, all you do is hear, 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 hear. And you never do, so that's why there's not no true change or transformation in your life. Because you stay on milk too long. But when you get to a point, I'm just saying, walk with me. It, when you get to a point where you stop being a hearer only and you begin to do God's will, then you get on meat. Now, for those of, all, for those of you all and all of us that do God's word, we're on meat. You, you're maturing. You, you're now doing God's word. God don't have to constantly keep repeating the same word you heard year after year after year before you actually do it. Before you actually allow it to manifest in your life. So now he doesn't have to keep giving you the same word. Yeah. And he told him, he said, you, by now you ought to be teaching somebody else. Yeah. Why are you 
still hearing, 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 and never coming into the knowledge of the truth. So but at some point, we have to start being doers of the word of God. Get off the milk and get on the meat. Now, this ain't for everybody, but if you're still on the milk, come on, receive the word. And when you're on the milk, when you're in a position where you're hearing God's word, you got to digest it. Because your baby can put milk in his mouth and spit it back out. He's not going to get the nutrients. So you got to make sure that even if you're still at that level where you're a babe in Christ and you're just coming back into God and you're just hearing the word right now, you're just trying to bring it all together, that's fine. But make sure you're digesting the word. Make sure you understand the word. Make sure when you're writing all those notes that you're actually going home and you're looking at them again and breaking down words you don't understand and reading that thing audibly to yourself. Whatever that message was, go home and read it out loud. Read it off that paper. Look at it on the TV, whatever you got to do. But that's where you hearing is effective. Hearing is not effective if you write it in your notebook and leave your notebook in the car until next week. And so once we gather and we get on the word and we're being fed, the thing about being fed, if you don't do nothing, you're going to get fat. And so if we keep sitting back, that's why uh, uh, I remember preaching a message many years ago about you, you getting on the word, you're getting all fat and healthy, but you're in the way. You're in the way. You're moving slow. You ever got in traffic and you got somewhere to be and somebody got in the fast lane? Was... Really? This is the left lane, sir? You're in the way. You're in the wrong lane. If you just want to get fat, then stay in the right lane. <laughs> that sounds But if you, want to, if you don't want to go, no. If you ain't got nowhere to go, get out of my way. If you're not going anywhere, get out of my way. Don't be in my way if you ain't got nowhere to go. I got somewhere to be. I, I ain't got time to be slow poking about somebody in sightseeing. You come this way all the time. You know what's on this street? Come on. And so we got to learn how to allow God's word to get in us and develop us, and then we got to move. So could you put that picture of the sheep that's not that's been neglected? I'm gonna show you what a sheep look like. That ooh, don't that look painful? Y'all laughing, but that's how we look in the spirit. Look at that. Ain't that bad? Somebody done just neglected shearing that sheep. Ain't kept his wool down. It's sun outside. And he could die. Yeah. He could literally die because nobody's tending to him. Nobody's tending to him. That's too much fur for his body. And when you see what a healthy one looks like, you're going to feel sorry for this one. And they do die. It gets too heavy for them. It gets too heavy. And they fall over in the way. And they die right there where they sit. They die right there. Now, ain't that sad? You get too heavy because they're not doing the word. They're just hearing it. Yeah, look at that. That's just, don't that look just bad? Now, let's see a healthy one. Mm -mm -mm, ain't that beautiful? I mean, can get up and run from a wolf in a minute. That one can't, the wolf gonna play, he gonna have a problem catching that. If that one take off running, but now that big chunky one, he ain't gonna be able to go too far. That's how they supposed to look, see? Those, those sheep are being tended to. They're being nurtured. They're being cared for. Somebody's doing the necessary maintenance for them. So you have to have maintenance. All of us need maintenance. That's why we have to get in 12s, and that's why we have to connect. We all need maintenance. And even though you might think you don't need nobody, you do because, you know, in those 12s, that's why I don't understand when people be skipping out on 12s and trying to act like they don't need the 12. You made that up. You made that up. That's not Bible. Because the Bible says that we are fitly joined together and that every joint supplies a need. So if you're not where you're supposed to be, you're draining everybody. Because when you do come around, you all busted up, broken up, and you need stuff. So the only time we get, get anything out of you is when you're going through something. Because you don't come and pour out. You just always got your cup empty, ready for us to fill it up. And it's almost like you, you, you can't do that because you're draining people. I'm talking about mature saints, okay? I'm not talking about the babies, the ones that's not in the 12 yet. I'm not talking about you, but you need to get in the 12 because all that is maintenance. 
Being in a 12 is maintenance. Coming on those Monday nights is maintenance. But what we have is a whole bunch of isolated salvation. People are getting saved and over here by themselves. Their family don't even know they saved. Your mama, who birthed you into this world, don't know you saved. Nobody knows you saved on the job because that's isolated salvation. And who benefits from that? That's not kingdom. And so God is saying, I want to see about that. Why is that? So I wanted y'all to see a picture of how, see how they all look like, that. you know, we got to stay healthy. And if you're not able to minister to somebody, listen to me. This is not one of those messages. If you're saying, Teresa, I know I just don't have it in me to minister to somebody right now. That's because you got something else in there. And we got to get that out. For three years, Jesus walked. And he was seeing about people. Believe it or not, God was taking inventory on the condition of, this, of his creation. He said, I can't do it from up here. I can't see right. I can't feel what they feel from up here. God, I have to become the son of man and walk among men so that I can understand why they keep messing up on me because God was zapping them in the Old Testament. Oh, you stole the jewelry? All y'all getting the pal. Boosh. The whole family getting burned up. But he was doing that so much, he was wiping out his creation, and it didn't really look that good. And so he said, let me go down here and see what's making them con constantly mess up. What's constantly causing them to err? And, and, and when he walked among us, he seen it. He, he realized real quick he needed to die because we couldn't do it. By the time he walked them three years, he didn't need to. We need 20 years and 15 years to get it. God only needed three years to show up on the scene. And he was able to assess the situation. Look, Kendall, real quick. And said, oh, they need a savior. They'll never meet the qualifications and requirements that I need met to get in my heaven. They ain't going to be able to do it. I have to be the lamb, lamb slain from the foundations of the world because you can't do it. You're going to keep going back on it. You'll keep doing stuff. You just keep doing stuff. And so he had to come down here and find out why. And I'm, and I'm going to say this, if you wonder why your daughter, your niece, your cousin, your son, your wife, whatever, is messing up, tend to them. You'll find out. Spend some time with them. Go visit them. Take them to lunch. Call them. Ask them, when can, can we get together? Amy, I ain't heard from you in a while. I'm sorry, forgive me. It's that easy. I'm sorry. I should have been checking on you. At least every once in a while. So there's a process of maturity, and I'm going to go through this real quick. There's a process of maturity. Number one, we get saved and we learn how to gather, and I kind of went over this already. We have to learn how to be unified. So when we gather, and gathering means nothing if there's no unity. So we have to learn how to be unified. And that Hebrews 10, 25 talks about not forsaking the gathering together of the saints. So it's biblical. So, you know, I understand stuff happening, and we got to miss sometimes, but don't make it a habit to not be at church on Sunday and Wednesday because somebody needs you in that seat. Somebody needs your worship. Somebody in here needs your praise. I don't know how many times I stood next to somebody, and I was, like, done. But just being by them, I just like, ooh, thank you, Lord. It's just something that's flames. It's just an overflow. Something just sparks. Just get on me. And I'm able to go and press through. You know, I'm able to keep on going, you know, so you just never know what it does. And then while gathering, we should be getting fed. Make sure that you're getting fed. You know, if you're not getting fed, you need to talk to somebody in your 12 and say, I don't feel like I'm growing. Let's see what's going on. Because you can't, you can't not be getting fed. So we need to make sure that you're getting fed. We don't want you in here starving. We need you to get fed. How do we tend to one another? And then I'm going to be done. Uh, a, allow the Holy Spirit first to tend to you. If you want to start learning, you're saying, I need to develop a tending in my spirit because I really don't care about people like that. I care about my family, but then when it comes down to other people, time and, and money and all that kind of stuff, I can't do it. Yeah, blocking your blessings. So ask, let the Holy Spirit tend to you first and let him teach you how to have a burden for people. Uh, two, once we allow the Holy Spirit... Um, 
to tend to us, we will be able to tend to others in our homes, in our families, and on our jobs. And to truly tend to people, we need a real burden for people. And I had to, you know, that's something I thank God for my 12. I thank God for them, and they are awesome. Um, they have been really taking on the connection phase and growing up in the area of connection. And it's, it's a struggle, but we've been, we've been doing it because it's, it's biblical. And learning how to connect and really get a burden. And, and, and we were struggling with connecting, weren't we? And then we found out that we need to start praying for one another more intensely and develop a real burden. Because it's hard to love somebody you don't pray for. You know, if I ain't praying for you, I'm not going to be able to really feel what you feel. God can't talk to me about you because I ain't even in prayer in God's presence about you. So if you're in here tonight and you're saying, oh, my God, I got a lot of stuff just in my soul. All that stuff ain't coming out tonight. But I will tell you it can. But I will tell you that God wants to see about you. He's here to see about you. He's here to attend to you. He wants you to cry out to him in truth. All that stuff that people don't know that's going on, you need to talk to God about it. You know, because God is saying, look, I'm trying to get a free flow of my anointing, of my love to flow through you. And it's not coming through. You know, it's, it's getting to you and stopping on you. Nobody else is getting benefited from my love but you. You're the only one getting blessed. You're growing, you're developing, you're maturing, you're this, that, and the third. But when it comes down to other people, you stop. Lights out. <laughs> And so that's not the way, the way God wants us to be. And so God says, let him tend to you. So I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet, and I'm asking that each one of you all just assess yourself. Ask God, ask the Holy Spirit, because you know what your truth is. You know what your truth is. We know what our truth is. We've seen what happens when sheep are not attended to. We've seen what happens. It gets too heavy to walk this walk.